All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with our next unit here. So we're going to get started with surface area of prisms and cylinders today. All right, so we have uh, covered area with our last section. Now we're getting into surface area, and later we'll be getting on to volume as well. But today we're just focusing on surface areas of prisms and cylinders. So let's get into some essential understanding here. I don't know why I started off with that. Okay, all right, so let's check it out. So to find surface area here. Of a three-dimensional figure, find the sum of the areas of all the surfaces of the figures. A prism is a polyhedron with two congruent parallel faces that are going to be called bases. The other faces are lateral faces, and you can name a prism using the shape of the bases here. So again, for these here, I think these are great pictures here for you to kind of understand what we're looking at here. So for a prism, the bases are going to be the same shapes. There's only there's always in a prism going to be two bases. Those bases should be the same. The uh, lateral faces are always going to be uh, rectangles in this in a, in a prism. So again, understand that the, that there can be such thing as a rectangular prism. But understand that the two bases in there should be pretty obvious when you're looking at it. So kind of think of it like a box when you get a box for like, you know, Christmas or something like that with like T-shirts in it. You know, the bases are pretty similar with, the, with the, what they look like. And then the ones that go around it are going to be the lateral faces. OK, so some other things you need to know. All right. So here's some key vocabulary here. All right, an altitude of a prism is perpendicular segment that joins the planes of the bases. Again, we kind of know what altitude is. That's the height. The height uh, of a prism is the length of the altitude. Again, same thing. A prism may either be right or oblique. All right, so again, there are good examples of this here. And as you can tell, we have those examples here. Here's what right looks like. Here's what oblique looks like. In a right prism, the lateral faces are rectangles and lateral edge is an at altitude. In an oblique prism, some or all of the lateral faces are non-rectangular. In this book, you may assume that a prism is a right prism unless stated or pictured otherwise. All right, so again, right prisms are going to have those rectangular ones, and then oblique ones are going to have non-rectangular ones. Pretty straightforward, okay? So lateral area and surface area. So this is kind of what we're focusing on today. The lateral area or the LA of a prism is the sum of the areas of the lateral faces. So again, remember those are the faces that go around the bases. The surface area is the sum of the lateral area and the area of the two bases. So again, if you found the area of one base, understand that the area is gonna be on, state on both bases there. Okay, pretty straightforward. Example one. Using a net to find surface area of a prism. So this is our first way that we can find surface area here. So uh, what is the surface area of the prism below? And you use a net. So again, understand if you haven't seen what a net is, a net is just a three-dimensional figure that's unfolded, right? So if I look at this rectangular prism here, we unfold that and it's going to look something similar to this, right? So this is the same uh, rectangular prism that, that we see here. It's just unfolded into a, a two-dimensional figure now. So... What we're going to do is we're going to add all the pieces up together here and then uh, and then uh, solve for what the surface area is. Remember, the surface area is kind of like wrapping a three dimensional pre uh, like a present. Right. You want to you always just want to wrap around, not the total part there. So that's what we're going to do. Is we're going to find each area of one of those parts there. So one thing that we can find there is if I look on the top there, that's a rectangle. So to find the area of that rectangle, it's just going to be three times four. So three times four. That rectangle would be 5 times 4, so that's going to be 20. We have 12, and then that one's going to be 12, right? Understanding a rectangle, opposite sides are congruent, so then that would be 3 times 5. I can fix that 20 a little bit. 3 times 5 would be 15. That 5 times 4 would be 20, and that 5 times 3 would be 15. So now knowing what each of those areas are, we're going to add all those numbers together now. So I have 12 plus 20, plus 12, plus 15, plus 20, plus 15. Last step, just type all those numbers into my calculator, add it together, all right? And when you add those all together, that should give you 94 centimeters cubed, or sorry, centimeters squared. Again, area will always be units squared, okay? All right, uh, let's move on here. All right, so some other essential understanding. You can find, oh, I don't know what happened there. 
All right. So you can find formulas for the lateral and surface area of a prism by using a net, which is what we just did. I don't know why it's highlighted there. Okay. Uh, you can use formulas with any right prism. So again, for the formulas here, for lateral area, it's going to be pH. So that P is the perimeter of the base. So again, any uh, the perimeter of the base would be A plus B plus C plus D, as we can tell right there. That net is unfolded. So there's your base, A, B, C, D, the perimeter of that, times the height. So there's your height right there in that H. So again, that's how you find the lateral area. And to find the surface area, it's going to be that same lateral area, that perimeter of the base times the height, plus 2 times the area of the base. So find what the area of the base is and multiply it times 2. Okay. So there is a theorem for this. So if, again, this is kind of what we just talked about here, but if the lateral area of a right prism is the product of the perimeter of the base and the height of the prism, then LA equals pH. The surface area of the right prism is the sum of the lateral area and the area of the two bases. Again, this is all stuff we talked about, but again, these are just the formulas written out for you. Okay, so again, understand that your LAs go together. So again, if you want to replace uh, LA with pH, you're more than welcome to. It's just going to be a lot easier to memorize that surface area equals lateral area plus 2B. Okay. All right. So let's take a look here. Let's get an example so that we can find this out. All right. So example two, what is the surface area of the prism below? So again, we are looking for surface area. So again, anytime that we are looking for the surface area, that means we need to find the, uh, let's write our formula out. So SA equals LA plus 2B. So the first thing we have to solve for here is LA. So remember, LA is pH, okay? Perimeter of the base times the height. So again, looking at our figure here, first thing you would ask yourself is what shape is our base? Is it the rectangle or is it the triangle? Remember, the, there's only two bases that we should have there. So if I look here, the base of this figure should be the triangle. There are only two triangles. There's three rectangles. Those rectangles are the lateral faces, the ones that go around the bases, okay? So we need to find the area of the base there. I oh, sorry, not the area, the perimeter of the base. That's what that P stands for. Unfortunately, we only have two out of our three sides in that right triangle. So again, to find what that third side is, I have to use my formula, um, Pythagorean theorem to find any missing side in a right triangle. So again, it's going to be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Luckily, I have both of my legs there, so it's just going to end up being 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. So 9 plus 16 equals C squared. So 25 equals C squared, and then take the square root of that. C should equal 5. So that means that that part right there is 5. So the, the perimeter of that would be 5 plus 4 plus 3. So that means my P is going to be 12. And they gave us the H. So the H is uh, the line that connects the two bases together, which right there we see is 6. So my H is 6. So my LA will be 12 times 6, which equals... 72. Okay, so there's part. We already have this part right here. We know that at the LA is 72. Now I need to find what my big B is. That's the area of the base. So the area of the base is the area of the triangle right there. To find the area of a triangle, it's base times height divided by 2. My base in that triangle is 3. The height is 4. And I'm going to multiply those two parts and divide it by 2. So 3 times 4 divided by 2. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I have plus 2 times 6, right? That's what my big B is. From there, 2 times 6 is 12. So the surface area is going to be 72 plus 12, which should equal, when this simplifies here, to be 84. And again, remember, we're doing surface area, so it's going to be my units squared all right a cylinder all right so we've covered a prism now let's cover a cylinder here a cylinder is a salt that has two congruent parallel bases that are circles again the altitude and the height as, as we should already know that again right and oblique are the same type of parts there all right again the pictures kind of sum it up best but we kind of cover what right and oblique should look like okay all right 
To find the areas of the curved surface of a cylinder, visualize unrolling it. The area of the resulting rectangle is the lateral area of the cylinder. So the surface area of a cylinder is the sum of the lateral area and the areas of the two circular bases. Again, you can find the formulas for these areas by looking at a net for a cylinder. So here's our formulas. Again, these are the ones we're going to be using for a cylinder. So lateral area is now going to be a little bit different. Remember, it's kind of harder to find perimeter of a circle here. So to find the lateral area, it's going to be 2 pi r h. 2 pi r h. Your surface area is going to be the LA, which is what we just laid out right there. 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. All right. So again, uh, this lays it out perfectly for you. Again, when they talk about unrolling it, this is what it looks like. Again, it's a rectangle with two circles. Okay, so that's what all cylinders are going to end up being here. Okay, and again, your formulas are right there. And again, if you want to see it in a different way, uh, I, this is that same theorem that we kind of saw before. Now it's just for cylinders. But uh, as we can tell, there is our uh, lateral area and our surface area. Okay, so example three, finding surface area of a cylinder here. Okay, so let's take a look here. So remember, we are looking for surface area. So again, for our surface area, it's always going to be SA equals LA plus 2B. That's what our surface area is. Always get that formula stuck in your head. SA equals LA plus 2B. We have to get that memorized into our head. Now, understand for cylinder, LA and B are going to be two different things there. All right. So again, if you want to go back there and go back in the video, understand that LA is going to be a little bit different. So for this one here, our LA, like we said before, was 2 pi R H. So remember, LA is 2 pi R H. Okay. If that's the case, we need two things. We need the radius and we need the height. Okay. If I go back into that question there, they tell us that the radius of the base of the cylinder is 4 inches, which is our radius, and that the height is 6 inches. Right. So if that's the case, they tell us everything that we need to know there for our LA. So again, I'm just going to plug that in here. So it's going to be 2 pi 4 6. That's everything that I need to know there, right? And again, we're going to leave this in terms of pi for right now because that's what they want us to do. Uh, leave it in terms of pi. So 2 times 4 times 6, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 6 is 48. So again, that lateral surface area is going to end up being 48 pi. Now, again, remember, this is not our final answer because now we need to go and solve for that 2B part. Remember, the area of a base is pi r squared. So all we need is the radius squared. So remember, our radius here is that, that B is pi r squared. The radius is 4, so it's going to be pi 4 squared. And 4 squared ends up being 16 pi. Remember, that's just for 1B, so that means that since 1B is 16, by, uh, 16 pi, 2B should be 32 pi. Now that I have my two parts there, my last part here is to just add these two parts together. So I'm adding 48 pi plus 32 pi. And again, it's just like treating it like X. So all we're doing there is just adding the two parts together, just the 48 and 32 and leaving pi alone. So 48 plus 32 ends up being... 80 pi, which again, as we can tell, there is the answer of C. Okay, so uh, that's what we're just learning today, guys. It's just surface area of prism and cylinders. Again, those formulas are key. So again, if at the very end, make sure you know that uh, your formula for surface area is SA equals LA plus 2B. Because again, that's the general formula for all surface area. Now, lateral surface area and the bases are going to be different for different shapes but the general form is always going to be sa equals la plus 2b all right so your homework that'll be due on wednesday at 11 59 p.m virtual office hours as always will be from one to two and again if you have questions please feel free to get in contact with me all right let's get off to a good start here with our next unit guys and again if you need me for anything just know i'm here for you you guys stay safe and uh have a good uh have a good rest of the day